Um, Ms. Molly, TWR-2019-01. Yes. This case represents an attempt by the applicant to construct a new 300-foot telecommunications tower. The primary motivation is to fill in a gap in the existing coverage area. The subject property is in the rural, rural service area and depicted as agricultural forestry on the future development map. Staff has found the request overall consistent with the comprehensive plan and the TRC have no objectionable comments regarding the request. Okay. We have questions for staff? Representatives from Moody are in the audience this evening. Okay. All right. If there are no questions, then um, from staff, is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak on behalf? State your name and address, please, sir. Yes, my name is Clay Brogan, and my address is 3393 Chippenham Circle, Birmingham, Alabama, 35242. Okay. Good evening, Commissioners. Again, my name is Clay Brogdon, and I'm the recently retired manager of site acquisition for Southern Link. Uh, Southern Link has since engaged me as an independent consultant to represent them on zoning and permitting matters of this type. Um, Southern Link is a wholly owned subsidiary of Southern Company, and we are the wireless communications provider for Southern Company's three large electric utilities, including Georgia Power, Alabama Power, and Mississippi Power. Um, we also provide wireless communications to um, numerous local, city, and state governmental agencies, other electric utilities, <coughs> and emergency management agencies as well. Some of our other customers include the Georgia State Patrol, the Georgia DOT, the Georgia Emergency Management Agency, and the Georgia Department of Natural Resources. These entities depend on Southern Link to provide reliable wireless communications, not only during their everyday activities, but especially after damaging storms, natural disasters, uh, medical emergencies, and other critical and dangerous situations. Restoring power after storm damage is made much more efficient when using reliable wireless communications. Southern Link has made the decision to transition to a brand new state-of-the-art LTE communication system for our boys and data needs. Um, we are proposing this evening to build a 300-foot tall guide tower off of US Highway 84 east of Valdosta to maximize coverage, capacity, and throughput data speeds in this area. In order to do that, we are requesting special use approval from Lowndes County for this undertaking. Southern Lane requires a minimum tower height of 300 feet at this location in order to achieve our coverage objectives. We have previously provided a written justification letter for 300 feet and coverage objective maps from our RF design manager, Shane Austin, during the application phase of this project. The proposed site is an approximately 103-acre tract of timberland property that will have a natural tree buffer to help buffer the view of the project. We've included photo simulations with our application to show that an objectionable, to show that an objectionable view of the tower is not expected. Also, a 300-foot tall tower would be tall enough to facilitate co-location by other wireless carriers such as Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Sprint. Thus, the need for only one strategically placed tower in the area rather than several shorter towers. We have researched the county's tower ordinance thoroughly, and our request for a new tower completely meets the ordinance as written, including all required setbacks. The county's planning staff is also recommending approval of this project. Because this proposed project completely meets the ordinance as written, and because of the need Southern Link has to provide reliable wireless communications to our very critical customers, I respectfully ask for your recommendation of approval of this project this evening to the county commissioners. This concludes my remarks, and at this time I'd like to ask Scott Purvis of Jordan Power to just come up and speak a brief word on the benefits of this project to them. 
And then after that, I'd be happy to try and answer any questions that you might have. Mr. Parkinson, if you could state your full name and address, yes. please. Uh, Scott Purvis, representing Georgia Power. My address is 805 West Savannah Avenue. And I will keep my comments brief, but I do want to center around three areas. Uh, with this tower, it does fill a gap. In Georgia Power, we do need reliable communications. Our employees always need to be able to talk to one another. We don't need gaps. We don't need any downtime. And this is a safety issue for Georgia Power. Safety is, is a big part of Georgia Power's culture keeping our employees safe is paramount. The second is what's already been referred to as storm damage and restoration. If you think about the storms that we've had through in the past couple of years, we had a couple of hurricanes, Irma and Michael, we've had a couple of tornadoes in the area. With this uh, tower, it fills that gap and our wireless communication allows our employees to talk during these, these storms and this damage. And it translates, if they're able to talk, it translates to quicker restoration times. We're able to get out there quicker and assess the damage and then communicate as to what that damage is and what we need to uh, restore the lines. And finally, it's around data. With this tower, it's going to give more efficiency to let our lines talk and communicate. And if the lines are able to talk with this tower, it's going to let us know and keep the grid safe and let us know when the things are out of us. So with that, uh, we are in favor of it. Do we have any questions for Mr. Purvis before he sits? I, I, I have one question. Um, Mr. Purvis, has there been some dead space? Is that what you're saying when you say a gap? There's dead space between the ability it's for your... Okay. All right. Thank you. Any questions? Is there anyone else here tonight? I think we have a little bit of time. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And this is to Clay. I just curious. Did, did, did I hear you state that you that y'all also allow some other wireless carriers to piggyback off this tower? Yeah, certainly. The tower will be designed in such a way that it will facilitate not only our stuff on it, but but also facilitate <coughs> other carriers who might have a need to co-locate in that same area like we did. So they would be able to contact us, and we would facilitate getting them on the tower. This is very common in this industry. We grant them tower space on our towers, and they do us the same. And we have towers that make sense for one another. And I do have a question. Y'all were not able to do that with the tower that's currently there. Correct. Okay. We, we investigated that thoroughly over a period of numerous months and we're not able to get anything more. Now, that tower uh, would be severely overloaded if we were to just put our stuff on. Okay, I understand. All right, thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, you, you're familiar with Moody Air Force Base, I'm sure. I bet you're from Birmingham. I'm sure you've been briefed on it by the everyone else here. I'm sorry, I'm the general, I've got a new phone and I managed to turn it off. But, uh, you know, Mr. Purvis was talking about the safety of Georgia Power and everything else. Uh, this is, according to the paperwork, this is kind of a, a 100 foot tower maximum, according to Moody Air Force Base, because of helicopter training in that area. Uh, while I applaud everyone's safety concerns, I think that that's paramount to, to anything else, is the safety of the military aircraft in that area. Just for a statement. Um, just, just a quick statement on that, buddy, if you would like to address that. I mean, we, we <coughs> were in contact with the, uh, um, with the staff about that, and, and it was our understanding that that was not part of the restricted space that Hoodie claims. Um, so, buddy, did you got <clears throat> this is Buddy Robinson. <clears throat> please state your full name and address, please, yeah, Mr. Robinson. Buddy Robinson. Uh, my company is Lady Concepts, and I work in my office is in 1790 Atkinson uh, Street, uh, Lawrenceville, Georgia, uh, 30343. I'm the site acquisition consultant for Southern Link. But uh, doing a pre application zoning requirement meeting, I had to. Uh, Carmelo Vassal and Molly and, and Deborah. What are you talking about? Does everybody have their phone call? <laughs> <laughs> we had a, a, about two and a half years ago, we had another site that Moody objected to in another area. So we relocated to an area across the street from a 300 foot guy tower and we, we were 
thinking that we were safe being across the street from the existing being able to power. We, we negotiated for almost two years for the county on doing a drop and swap on the county. The negotiations did not work out. Um, therefore, we acquired a, a, a site across the street that we're asking y'all to do today. During my meeting with the planning the administrator and the staff, we talked about, do I have to have another meeting like we had before with Moody? She said, absolutely not. This was not a restricted area that she would handle that coordination for us. So, um, so we have moved forward based on that information, uh, developing this proposed site. I was, I was surprised to hear that Moody has objections to it based on that no, nothing in the county has that shows that this is a restricted area. Uh, but also, there's another tower, almost 300 feet tall, two miles further um, east of this. So uh, if they've been flying around a 300 foot tower and another tower, I think they can fly around this one. So, so that's, that's what, that's our opinion. Because that's the, we, we tried to research it in the very beginning to make some wise decisions up front. Thanks. I believe we do have a couple of questions. Okay. Just one curiosity question, Mr. Robinson. You mentioned 140 acres, 103 acres, 103 acres. That's right. And you mentioned the reason for that. Is that is, can you go over that one more time? No, I, I just mentioned that the parcel that we yeah. want to lease to build the tower on is 103 acres of timber land. Okay. So we're in set on that property where we will just, you know, just take that just the bare minimum trees we need to. There will be a tremendous tree canopy all around and buffering the view. No, I don't have any objections. I'm just Curiosity question on my part: Why you want to lease 103 acres? Oh no, we're not leasing the whole 103 acres. Okay. We're just leasing a 100 by 100 okay. foot area within okay. that 103 acres. I'm sorry, okay. I wasn't clear about that. All right, that makes more sense. Yeah, of course. Okay. Were there other questions for the speakers? We have um, used our time, but I will allow if there's one more person who would like to speak on, on behalf of this request. All right, if not, is there someone here tonight who wishes to speak against the request being presented? Please come forward, sir, and state your name and address. I'm Bill Ryan, the Chief Engineer for the Air Force Base. Uh, the community planning function of the base falls underneath. Uh, we, I think we have a true disconnect on this particular project. Because it's, I, we provided this to the electronics, I don't know if you've seen it yet. It, it's alone. We have it. Uh, the, the previous site and this site both are right underneath the flight track of our helicopters. And I, I, when we had this discussion with the, these folks in the, in the previous site, and we said, come back and see us if you've got other sites, we can double check. That hasn't happened. Uh, we got the uh, word on this uh, last week, and we really haven't had a chance to let our helicopter pilots look at it, but it's pretty straightforward. It's right underneath one of the helicopter flight tracks. Uh, Mr. Bryant, could you once again tell us your role at Moody Air Force Base? Sure. I'm the chief engineer. I'm the, the equivalent of the city engineer okay. uh, for Moody Air Force Base. Uh, the, all of the construction activities, all of the master planning, siting activities on the Air Force Base fall into the Okay, thank you. Uh, so, all right. Uh, there, it is true there, there is a, uh, an, another no-fly area a little closer to Naylor that we recommended. There, there are no-fly areas around the county in the, in the South Georgia, uh, North Florida area. <laughs> Uh, that we avoid. Uh, we, we'd like to not have any more of those. Uh, the pilots would like to have as, as uh, free a hand of, of flying as they, as they can. Uh, pretty much in this whole area, um, the helicopters can be down in the plus or minus 100 foot range. So I think that's the reason for ULDC uh, guidance is because of that. Uh, so, uh, how does the tower that is currently there, how does that affect the flight path? They avoid it. They avoid it. Mm -hmm. Commissioners? 
So you say they avoid it, but it, it presents the same problem that you're concerned about the new tower, but simply they simply avoid it and have avoided it for some amount of time. I, I don't know what it will. And I don't know how close it is to the other side. Two miles. Mm -hmm. Two miles. And uh, it's literally across the street. Yeah. I, I'm not aware of a 300 foot tower, but I haven't been out to the site. I, again, we just got this, and we really haven't had a chance to to research this. If nothing um, else, I'd, I'd appreciate it if you've taken it long enough for us to, mm -hmm. to do the proper research. Mr. Bryan, have you seen uh, the simulated drawing that was um, afforded to us um, this evening where the proposed tower location is in relation to the current tower? I have not. Have you not? Isn't it possible to share that on the screen, Molly? I do no. Okay. No? Mr. Bryan, if you could come forward and just um, take a look at my copy. Yeah. Thank you. Mark a little bit and we'll let you see this. Okay. <laughs> this, this is what we need to see. Okay. Uh, That's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll scribble all over. She had to clean with me or somebody. Yeah. Didn't yeah. I'll yeah. scribble. I've got that. That's, he, okay. that's what he provided. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. So you can tell from the simulation that it is, I, I mean, I, I don't know how many feet. Um, from the yeah, it's literally right across U.S. Highway 84. The okay. guy has a tower right there. This would be directly across 284, two three hundred feet back onto the property. Okay. So, you don't know how long that tower has been there? It's been there for years. I don't know how many, but it's been there for a long time. And this one will be so close. Okay. That Thank um, so. I think my point would be if they're already avoiding the area, it doesn't seem like we're going to be creating another avoided area. Is it would be? I, it, I, maybe I, I okay. Maybe I haven't had a chance to, to staff. Okay. To take a look at it. Okay. So am I correct to say all you'd like to do is to table the motion until you can have a chance to I, research? That's what I'd like to do. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do we have any other questions for our speaker? There's, there's also an FAA approval, I believe, that has been happened. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Your name and address, please. Uh, my, name is Pam, my name is Pamela Summers, and I live at 1305 DBK and I work for um, Mr. Murray. Okay. And the planning function falls under me. So any tower of this height has to be reported to the Federal Aviation Administration and get a letter of clearance. And so that's usually a check for us, right, because we get it from two different directions. <coughs> and the FAA hadn't notified us about this proposed tower either. When we got the notice last week, we checked the FAA obstruction website. And at that time, it didn't occur that the letter of clearance had been um, received. And we wouldn't expect that until they have come back the other day has contacted so, okay. so that's that's kind of a check and balance on this. Okay, let's get um, a reply to that, Mr. Brockett. Yes. Has FAA been notified? Yes, yes, I'd like to, to reply to that. Thank you. Ms. Summers, you can just hang out. We may have a couple more questions. Certainly on towers of this height, we have to go through the FAA for approval. The FAA is the federal governmental authority that governs all airspace in the United States. We made applications for this tower back in November of 2018. It is still pending. Uh, and, and certainly we won't, we can't, we never have built a tower without getting FAA clearance. So I would like to propose, just rather than tabling this, maybe you make a stipulation that we can't, we can't move forward until the FAA approval determination no hazard has been received. That would, that would delay us from being able to do anything, which we wouldn't do it anyway, because we'd be violating the law at that point if we built that tower without FAA approval. All right. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
but we can't build the tower until the FAA approval comes in. Mm -hmm. so, I understand that. Yeah. What is, if you've got all these steps to do, what would hurt the table? You're, you're pushing to get it done today. Well, that's because we've been working on it for the last two years trying to get a site built out here. Every day that goes by is another day that these guys are working in an unsafe condition. This tower is so close to the existing tower that if they did navigating around it, this one, the new tower would be marked and lighted just like the existing tower that's a few hundred feet away. The opposition is that if they did navigating around it for all these years, this one is not going to cause them problems. So my understanding is you're trying to do all of these different steps that, uh, could, I mean, parallel. You're yeah, trying to work on it currently. Right, yes. currently. Okay. We, don't, we, we don't want to get it complete and then start another. There's a lot of things that are going on at one time. Right. Yes. Uh, you said you've been working on this since 2018? With the since before, probably 2017, if not before. When did, when did the county find out about that? I'm sorry? When did you submit to the county for approval? For this particular, we've been working on when was it submitted to the county, sir? What was the date of submission to the county? Do you have that in your application? It doesn't have to be exactly in time, just as close as you can get. It was March 20th, 2019. 19. Okay. So you all take two years and you expect us to do it in two months. And Moody Air Force Base is very prominent part of the county here. And it's safety is part of our county officer. Okay. Thank you. So what you're saying is the FAA is going to approve it within 30 minutes? No, I don't know when the FAA is. They are on no, on no time clock. Sometimes they do them in 30 days, other times it takes months. What's the average time for the FAA to respond? Uh, generally three months or four okay. or less is a good time frame. Unless they're complicated, uh, it takes them longer. Okay. So you're you're in about five months now. Uh, if I remember from the email that we got, the base responded with a 20, at least a 21 day lead time once they're notified. So if we delay this for another 21 days until we get the base approval and the FAA may come in at the same time, we don't know. I know the federal government just kind of got two speed slow to stop. But uh, you know, I just. I just can't see moving forward with this until we have all of our ducks in a row. Or at the same time. Um, so, a point came up that we tabled this conversation. I mean, obviously I'll entertain a motion of um, however you guys want to, um, to word it, but um, you know, I think obviously waiting for that FA approval is a big um, is a big thing here. So I will, um, you know, entertain a motion however it is worded. Um, do we have any more questions first? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Do we have any more questions for our speakers before we close out? Okay. Thank you, sirs, very much. Thank you. All right. So the public hearing portion of that has been closed, and I will now turn it back over to the commissioners for any um, questions or comments. Yes. I would like to make a motion to table this request until both the FAA and Moody Air Force Base at that time in the spot. Okay. That, that, that could be open ended. Well, and that's what I was just about to say. Let's put let's put some kind of um, my recommendation. Thirty days. Then I will mention thirty days. Because we still said give them a month. So. Right. Okay. So you want to say thirty days? I will give it to thirty days. So they could come back next week or next month in this meeting or depending on what the county commission does on this in two weeks. Okay, so we have a motion to table this request for 30 days. All right? To a May meeting. Okay, and until our May meeting. All right. Do I have a second on this motion? All right. So that is seconded by Commissioner Willis. Did you get the. Okay. All right. If there's no other discussion on the motion, I'll ask for the vote. All of those wishing to vote in favor of the motion made by Commissioner Hall to table this for 30 days, signify by raising your right hand. Okay. All those against? Okay. And Commissioner Hall. All right. So. 
Motion carries. We will table the motion until our next meeting, 30 days. So is that about this time in May we'll be back here? Our, our meetings are the last Monday of the month. Okay. Ms. Molly? Mon the last meeting of oh. May will be on Tuesday. Yes, that's right. I apologize. Because the Monday is Memorial Day. Right, we have Memorial Day. That's the 28th, sir. The 28th. Does the board of commissioners have any Sir? Our meeting with the board of commissioners. This item won't be on the board of commissioners' agenda, is what we're asking. Yeah, it will still be. Yeah, it will still be. I mean, the actual, we were anticipating being on It'll be on It'll still, still be on their agenda. It'll be on this month. Because okay. Our, okay. what we decide here tonight is recommendations only. Okay. So they will still go forward with their, with their on their agenda, okay. so you'll still want to make plans to attend their meeting. Okay. They may uh, agree with us. They may not agree with us. Okay. So you'll still want to attend their meeting. Okay, thank you. So, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Okay, do we have any other business?